Hey guys, uh, this is Anthony here with uh, a Shadowverse Evolved deck profile. I recently got into this game and I went to a couple locals and I did pretty well with this Runecraft deck I had. And I'm just sharing my deck build ratios and thoughts. And so here it is. Of course, uh, I play Earthrite and for the one costs, I played one Conjure Golem and three Teachings of Creation. Uh, originally, I only played Teachings of Creation, but uh, I found that the Earthrite uh, build curve was very unnatural in that I ran way too many three cost cards and not enough two costs or lower, which led to, me, led to me having really unplayable hands where I had to skip my turn one and turn two uh, despite mulliganing. And that happened quite a lot. So what I did was I cut down on one of the three drops to play a uh, more balanced ratio of two drops. Uh, so uh, yeah, so that's where I added the golem in. The golem is decent. Obviously you wanted to always draw creation, but uh, you can always just play Conjure Golem turn one and then play the golem turn two and you have to play for turn one and turn two, right? So after that, Uh, we get onto the two drop cards. There's only uh, two playable Earthrite cards in this set. So there's three copies of the Alchemist Workshop and three copies of Crafty Warlock. I wish there was more because I like to build a deck where the highest uh, amount of cards are in the true drop slot because two drops are the easiest to slot into most, uh, most plays. It's really easy to spend two PP on something and have it be really impactful. Obviously these two are really good and then I supplemented the 2-drop with 2 copies of Fire Chain. Uh, this card is decent in that it, it's one of the spells that Merlin can recast. And being able to stretch it off Merlin is also decent for removal options. But this card is not always live, especially if you go first. Uh, you'll find that a lot of the times that uh, your opponent would also have passed turn 1, so you can't use this going first. So in reality, I only count me for having 10 playable cards uh, going... Uh, 10 playable cards before turn 3. So that, that that's like the ratio that I'm aiming for. Uh, up to 3 drop. 3 drop is the most important slot because a lot of your power cards are here. Uh, 3 copies of Ancient Alchemist. This, this card is probably not a turn 3 play, but it's one of the more important cards in your deck because it allows you to push for game. It's one of the options that you have late game where you can burn for 9 or more damage at once. Uh, Runic Guardian, this is the best card you want to see early. You want to see this card on turn 3, because if you play an Sigil before turn 3, and then you play this card, it's a 4-6 ward. It trades into everything, and not everything trades into it. Uh, 3 Merlin. Merlin is just the best card in Runecraft. Uh, we can, in this deck, Merlin can search us burn, removal, or follow up. So, this is really good. It can also get us into engine. So, we're playing 3 copies of it. Uh, one copy of Demonic Strike to give Merlin the ability to become removal, uh, to become burn because late game, if you have, if you're sitting on eight play points, you can play Merlin, search Demonic Strike, play Demonic Strike, play two to evolve the Merlin, recast the Demonic Strike, and that's eight mana you can burn for six phase. It's really uh, clutch for closing out games behind wards where your opponent is like hiding behind wards or, and whatnot. And then, uh, Price of Magic. It's another Earth Sigil. You need you need like consistent stack generation. That's not Juno's, because if you if you don't have enough, then if you don't see Juno's, you just lose, right? So, and this is uh really easy, really good going second, especially because uh it it trades very well into a lot of your opponent's three drops and it develops your stack. But uh since this is a really expensive Earth Sigil, you only you only play two because you want to see it some of the time, not all of the time. You don't want to see multiples usually. And then this is the one I took out. Uh, I originally had three, but I found this card clogging me more often than not because uh, this card is meant to deal with uh, early threats like uh, two cost wide wards from Abyss or uh, Forest or Sword. But I found that um, just playing out my early curve was enough to contest them a lot of the time. And this card ended up just being a suboptimal play and sitting dead in my hand a lot of the time. Where it, playing this card doesn't actually advance your game plan because it doesn't put any sigils on board nor does it eat any sigils so i ended up cutting one copy of this for the uh conjugal so that puts me at 
four one cost cards, eight two cost cards, and 14 three cost cards. You see what I mean by uh, this deck has a very unbalanced curve where there's all your big plays are three cost, and three cost cards are the are the worst stat line because you like you can only comfortably play them on turn three, turn six, and uh, like turn nine, ten, where you can play multiple three cost cards. So like that's like one of the big problems with this deck. Uh, for four cost cards, uh, we have two urns. Urn is a really good removal option. Especially against like evolved followers, you can like knock the evolve off of it. So like you force them to like play it again for full cost. They might not have evo points. Uh, it trades very well against like followers that are not like not uh, engaged. Uh, one execution. It's mainly because Merlin can search it. It's part of the package. And then three copies of Golden Protection. This is, can be searched by Merlin. So that's what I mean by Merlin get you into engine. If you have already have a sigil, you can go Merlin turn three into protection turn four. Uh, it allows you to eat the sigil and create like a pretty decent board like two three fours for uh for four is not a bad price to pay especially since they're both wards right and then for the five is junos a lot of people say that this card is a brick you don't want to see this card in multiples but this card is the card right now that allows you to win the game if you see this card on turn five this card is such a huge tempo swing it's almost all the times three golems that turn and it consistently produces you golems every turn from that point on or it gives you like it makes your turn 70 erasmus much easier because a lot of the times if you like play the deck correctly or you don't draw into bricks turn seven you won't have two sigils for erasmus but you'll have one so you'll play the erasmus and then you'll tap the junos for a second sediment and that would give your erasmus like full value seeing this card is so important i cannot stress how like it insane it, this card is for the deck so you have to play three copies of it i i know some people play two but in, in my opinion like this is the most important card you have to see on curve if you don't see this card a lot of your like a, your game plan is like ruined per se like a lot of you just don't have as much value as your opponent and then for the high end two copies of mithril golem and three copies of erasmus uh people might say that since you're not playing enough spells mithril golem doesn't generate enough value but that's false because uh your deck uh the earthright deck in general tends to uh play passive the first two turns and then slowly start ramping up on turn three turn four and what i like to do is on turn four i like to play golem protection and i don't ward any of my golems uh to save them for when i go for a bigger play later like let's say i played junos and then if I curve Junos into Mithril Golem, like the Golem Protection, Junos, Mithril Golem, it will, the Mithril Golem will clear all, every, almost everything that your opponent has, and most of what's not cleared can be cleared by Strike Form Golem generated by Junos, and from that point onwards, you have a 5-6 body that can contest everything very well. So, like, it's, it's, it's very important against uh, a lot of classes where they're just forced to trade into your 2-3 golems and 3-2 golems where they'll have less than 3 health followers. So when this card comes out, it most usually will just wipe the entire board clean. The only time this follower is subpar is against Dragon, where they don't have that many low-cost followers. And even then, it'll like swipe away the annoying followers, like the, the Bell Ringers and the uh, Shapeshifting Mages. So like, it's a, it's a pretty decent card. It's not really a work. And then Erasmus. Erasmus is... Uh, like your wood condition against dragon specifically uh it punishes your opponent for spending uh play points on one big thing because when it when you play it it already generates instant value by getting face damage and, and clearing the board and the eight health body is very hard to answer especially with junos being able to provide you with a ward half the time to like protect this thing like hiding decent sized followers behind wards is one very easy way to win the game with this deck since this deck just has so much burst uh turn six to eight where like you turn a losing game plan a game situation into a winning one yeah and then uh for the evolve deck two copies of crafty warlock you'll never really need the third one uh you, you'll never like evolve three copies of it and then uh i'll probably i'll probably play three copies of the evolve merlin i just don't own them right now uh since like the evolve deck is like really loose there's not many cards that can evolve in the first place two copies of ancient alchemist this card costs too much to evolve you'll basically never evolve the third one anyway so two 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 and then i have three copies of this because well i don't 
own the third copies of the other one even though i only play two of this i'll probably just, just change it but uh this two copies of this you'll probably need against the aggro if you play this card you're always evolving it anyway right you're never playing demon Queen mage and not evolving it unless you, you can't evolve and then one Erd. Uh, this allows like your Erd to answer a lot of the stuff so you have to play this but i don't see myself ever evolving two of it so yeah that's the that's the deck um i went to two locals so far with this deck i went 3-0 at one of them and 4-1 on the other playing against a lot of banner sword a lot of aggro abyss uh quite a few dragons i played against one d shift and my one loss was the forest where my opponent uh silver bolted me twice when i skipped turn three which was rough uh i skipped turn three and i drew runic guardian turn four which uh, if i drew that one turn earlier i could have pressured with a four six board but it is what it is uh i got i got cheesed by double silver bolt and i think that was a deserved loss but otherwise this deck has been performed very well i'll take it to the store championships ots championships next week and i'll tell you my results but yeah this has been my Earthright deck let me know if you guys any any suggestions any improvements and signing out